it's getting close to the end of June, which means the price of the corporate citizen playbook is going to go up. So what you want to do, because this is going to drop, I believe, Thursday. And one of the things that you need to do, which means the end of the month is tomorrow. So you guys need to go ahead and get into it because right now we're getting into some really important stuff for July. How to get customers. I feel that this is going to be the best part of the corporate citizen playbook. So what you want to do is go below, get in and reserve your discount and reserve the training that's going to change your life. So with that, let's go ahead and get into this video. I was watching a video and the number of AI generated channels is borderlining on Epic. And it was talking about how to get rich. And this is one of the things that I never see on these channels. It was a shorts driven channel. It was talking about the things, you know, how I became a millionaire at 23. And one of the things that I find to be very interesting, all of these people are becoming millionaires without forming a business. And they're doing it really, really quick. Now, I will say that there are some young people on the internet who've become extremely rich and they started businesses. And for me, the fastest way to get rich, the fastest way to get rich on the planet. And when I say rich, and I'm going to go ahead and give you each stage of getting rich. First stage, it's going to take you three to five years and literally where you are today, doing what you are doing. If you were to start a business in three to five years, you could become a more liquid millionaire. Now, there's a lot of people who are based upon their assets, housing, real estate, stocks, that there are a millionaire on paper, right? You start a business that cash flows well, you will be able to do things. Let, let's, let, let's go ahead and say, you got someone over here who's worth $5 million on paper, right? And you have a business that after expenses, after payroll, after taxes, puts a million cash in your pocket every year. You would be able to do things that this person who's worth 5 million cannot do because here's the thing, net worth. Net worth is everything that you have minus the deductions. And if you're cash flowing at a million dollars a year, which is $83,000 per month, you could live like a billionaire. You could afford the most expensive house in your town. You could do all kinds of crazy stuff, but that's not why we're here. We're here to talk about the fastest way to become rich on the planet. Start a business, get it cash flowing. In three to five years, you can be extremely rich. Now, getting rich through investing, let's talk about that. The average person who makes $40,000 or less a year, which is 80% of the country, doesn't have enough money to get rich anytime soon. I've looked at the calculations, and if this person is going to get rich, if they can go ahead and start putting money away when they're 20 and consistently invest, and for the next 40 years. I got a question for you. When have you kept a job for 10 years? When have you lived in the house for 10 years? When have you had a car for 10 years? The point I'm making is people change. There's a lot of change. And here's the thing. You have to invest that sum of money without interruption. Let's say you have a two year interruption that will dramatically impact the end game of your investment strategy. So I'm not an investor. I actually am currently in the stock market and it's really interesting. I don't even look at it every day. I just look at it every now and then and see that it literally, I bought a bunch of Apple stock at 150 and the Apple stock is now selling for 182. So my Apple stock went up $30. Let's talk about that. So. If I spent, keep the numbers simple, I spent 150,000 on 
yeah that would be because for every thousand it would be 1500 so for every 10,000 it would be 15,000 so I would buy at $150,000 when the stock was $150 that would get me 10,000 shares of Apple stock so if that Apple stock moved from 150 to 182 that would have been a $30 appreciation per stock which would have amounted to a thirty thousand dollar gain once i sell the stock and realize that gain hundred and fifty thousand dollars and let's see i bought that stock last year so a thirty thousand dollar appreciation happened over eight or nine months let's 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 dive deeper into there all right for me to get that money i would have to sell my apple stock which means that i no longer own the apple stock and this is why a business because once again let's say you get the business that cash flows to a million dollars a year and this is after all expenses payroll taxes you're netting out at eighty three thousand dollars per month guess what you don't have to sell the business to get that return next year so this is where a business is so much better than investing and chasing these passive income schemes but you know i'm going to tell you what i know i'm not going to tell you what i don't know don't really know a lot about investing so i'm not going to speak on that what i will speak on is how starting a business literally changed my life pretty quickly let's go back in time when i started my first business i had a job a job that i kept for about a year before i quit and my business had made two hundred and fifty thousand. let's let's just go ahead and talk about you know being a commission salesperson is meaning if i didn't work i didn't sell anything i didn't get paid so let's call that era the beginning of my business phase and I was able to pay cash for a car when I wasn't even rich. See, cash flow is everything. Cash flow is everything. And I was like at a point, I had a brand new BMW in my garage. I didn't really have a bunch of credit cards back then, but I had a lot of cash. I had cash to do whatever I wanted to do whenever I wanted to do it however I wanted to do it. And that time frame, that year, while well, it was an employed salesperson, and that 250,000, that year I made $600,000. Wasn't rich, my tax bill was kind of stupid back then. My tax bill was about 180,000. So that left me 420,000. And it left me learning a lot of stuff because let me be 100% clear. Back then, I was not rich, but I felt rich because at that time, there was nothing that I wanted that I could not get, including cars, including housing. There was nothing that I wanted that I could not get. And this is the situation with starting a business. Now, I know there are many people on the internet it was like, well, most businesses fail. Let's talk about that. Why do most businesses fail? I'm about to explain to you. Right now, we got a situation that is brewing with Airbnb. We have a lot of Airbnb owners who are going to sell their Airbnb property because I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, the fourth most visited area in the United States. And we have literally, I can go to Zillow and full up three, four, five, I'm like, boom, just like that. Fully furnished Airbnb property with the little house shoes by the bathroom. And the, this, this, well, stick with me, stick with me. These people got into Airbnb because they heard about Airbnb and everyone started teaching these Airbnb courses and a lot of people got in Airbnb. And now here's the situation. There are too many Airbnbs. So a lot of these people who literally been in the Airbnb space for two or three years are about to make a quick 
exit out the Airbnb space. And these people are not idiots. They were smart enough to have the situation where they can get an additional mortgage. See, this is the reason that businesses fail. You have people jumping into businesses without understanding the business. Because if I was to say Airbnb, you would say that's a good real estate investment. And I would say, no, I didn't say that. I said Airbnb, it's a hospitality business, which is totally different than a real estate business. And because people are getting into Airbnb, thinking that they're investing in real estate when they're investing in a hospitality business that has a lot of moving parts. And the, the thought is, it's sold. You go ahead and get yourself a few Airbnbs and you could get this passive income, right? And that passive income thing ain't working out for a lot of Airbnb owners because these folks did not understand, number one, the fundamental business that they were getting in. Number two, they didn't understand the market. Number three, they did not research the market. Number four, they had no understanding of the market that they were in. It was just like, Airbnb sounds like a really good way to make some money. And this is how a lot of people fall into businesses. There is no research like um, my failure of a business. I got into the car rental business because when I was looking for information about the car rental business, it was hard to find true negative information. It was really, really hard because everyone's like, Eric Carro, Toro's great. Uh, selling, you know, renting cars is the best thing ever, right? And then literally, I got in the car rental business, I bought 31 cars, and six months later, I was out because for me, it was a terrible business. Because once I start, and this is one of the things, I started putting videos up here on YouTube talking about how bad the business was. And then you start to see all these other people now starting to put up videos talking about how bad the car rental business was. So to my, I'll just take ownership. I invested as much as I could into car rental business. And then I came up with this grand plan, which really hastened my exit to the car rental business. I would go ahead and buy my own data to get real data because on paper, the car rental business looked amazing, but the practical reality, I didn't have a problem getting the cars. I didn't have a problem renting the cars. These were the, my biggest problem. My number one problem was damage. I had a 35% wreck rate. So at one point I had 12 wrecked cars. Number one problem. Number two problem. I had 20 people arrested for taking my car and refusing to communicate and pay me. And they all got arrested driving that car. That was the second problem. So number one, they're going to wreck your cars. Number two, you're going to have people who are going to get in your cars. They're going to keep your cars and they're going to refuse to bring them back. And that right there, that, that right there was just one of the reasons that that business failed. And fortunately for me, that business gave me some wisdoms and insights because until that business, uh, from the first business that I had with the job and the storage auction business and conundrum publishing and all, everything else has been successful. So I think it was good for me to kind of uh, take that head on the chin to make me more realistic and you know to do deeper dives before jumping into a business and this is one of the big reasons that so many people fail now fortunately for me i had the financial wherewithal to take that hit and still be okay but there are many people who would have gotten into that business they would be in bankruptcy court and because i paid cash for the cars because at the moment i still have three cars three cars left to sell. And one of the things is that I look at all of my businesses that have been successful. And each one of these businesses put me in a above average income stream. On the storage auction business, I'll, I'll tell you a story about the storage auction business. At one point, I was on what I call a 50% solution. 50% solution which is in the free money course, which is below, you should get in that, is where you live on 50% of your money. Now, once again, I would say in the beginning stages of the storage auction business, we were doing about $40,000 a month. That was 20,000 for me, that was 20,000 for my partner. 
I did not have $40,000 a month of expenses. So I was like, hey, let me go ahead and start putting a lot of money in the stock market. So I was putting about $10,000 a month in the stock market. And then revenues went up and that 10,000 went to $20,000 a month in the stock market. And, you know, once I looked at my portfolio, most of the money that was in my portfolio did not come from performance. Performance is the money that your stocks make you. Didn't come from performance. The majority of the money that came from my portfolio is because I was putting half of my income in there, which is something that I was able to do because I had a business. Paid off car, paid off everything. And one of the things that will happen as you get in the business and you stay in business and you learn your business, you're gonna get smarter, you're gonna get better. Because each year I've been in business, I get better and better and better. So 2017, I saw 2016, 2017, I think 2017, I saw this brilliant blue Porsche at the Porsche dealership and I stopped and I looked at it and I test drove it and I said, I'm gonna get me a Porsche. And then I went home and I came up with a plan of how to get the Porsche. Number one, make my business better, make more money because I wanted to pay cash for Porsche. Now, I know there are many people who will disagree with me, but I feel that if you're gonna have a Porsche or a certain kind of BMW, you need to be in a position to pay cash or to be able to pay this car off within a year because just the normal maintenance of these cars is extremely expensive. And these are, you know, and this is one of the reasons that you see a lot of Porsches on the used market with very low mileage because the owner has multiple cars. I have multiple cars. Um, I got my X5, a 2017 BMW X5. I got it, it had 26,000 miles on it. Uh, we're going on the third year of ownership. It's at 42,000. I haven't even put another 26,000 miles on it because I have two cars. And once again, I'm driving my Porsche every day. I'm driving my Porsche every day. And it's got like 2,700, almost 20, 2,800 square mile. And that car is gonna get mileage on it because I love driving it. I love driving it. So with a business, you could be in a position where you pay cash for cars and I'm about to explain to you my next move, my next house, because I don't live in the house at the moment, I'm gonna pay cash for it. And this is the power of being a business owner, having a vision and having a plan. Because I am 56 years old, I'll be 57 in October. And before I am, let's see, before I'm 58, I would be living in the house that I paid cash for. So money in the bank, extremely good credit, cash for cars, cash for houses. And this is something that can come to you if you start a business. And number one, you manage your money correctly. That's the thing that you have to do. You have to manage your money correctly. You really do. So this is one of the things that we will be talking about because I'm hyped. July is about to get hot because we're going to get into specific training because, you know, the training of how to set up your holding company, now set up your operating company. And now we're going to talk about how to get customers. This to me is going to be the most important training of the corporate citizen playbook how to get customers. That's going to be it. And one of the things that you will begin to understand, and you should go ahead and get into the course because this video is going to come out, I believe Thursday, and you don't want to be lacking because the day after Thursday is the last day that you can get in at this price and the price is going to go up. Once again, this is the fastest way possible for you to start to get rich. And literally, if you're 20, by the 25, time you're 25, you could be a millionaire. You could be a millionaire, living a very good life. So this is the path, this is the thing that I know. 
My name is Glendon Cameron. Go ahead and get into the Corporate Citizen Playbook. Links below, it's in the description box. And if I'm up when this comes out, it'll be in the comment box. So my name is Glendon Cameron. I will see you guys in the next video.